Pleasure to speak to you again. Uh, we last spoke in person in Las Vegas at the Wynn Resort uh, as Vegas. we kind of launched yep. this th this this huge, uh, let's just say, wagon train, as it were. Um, we had left you. Uh, you guys had just run out of a dust storm, and then we were about to leave you to go back to that world. So I guess the question is: after we left you and you started recording, uh, you started, you know, uh, putting down some some more episodes. What was it like to return after having a brief time off of 1883 before you essentially jumped back into the gritty world? It was a little shell shocking. You know, we haven't seen the outside world in months leading up to that. So all the bright lights and cars and just, it was, uh, it was different. But when you get back on your horse, it, it all settles back in. And that, um, that brought us right back to the red dirt and Guthrie and, and Amarillo and all the good windstorms. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't start off asking, you know, uh, we, we've seen uh, so much stuff from your character uh, in the sense of uh, growth, uh, past, the things that he's gone through, uh, but also a possibility of, you know, maybe there's more to life than this. There's, you know, relationship things as well. How do you feel like he, he's grown um, in 1883 in these short, you know, nine episodes so far? Uh, just, you know, Thomas is, he's seen a lot leading up to this point, but I think what jumped out to me was the relationship that he's formed with uh, Noemi, and he's learning a lot from Noemi, and Noemi's learning a lot from him, and this is a part that Thomas wasn't really familiar with uh, leading up to this. He's, he's a capable cowboy. He knows how to use his hands. He knows how to use his weapons. He knows horses. He knows the terrain, but he had to learn how to allow himself to be loved. And this was something that we all got to see play out in person. And, you know, that's that's from Taylor. And it's just, uh, it's a beautiful story, um, you know, to watch unfold on screen. The other thing that I love about Thomas is he is, he's someone who allows, I guess is the best way to say it, because he knows where Shay's mind is. He knows the things he's going through. He knows that Shay has like almost an end road, but he's there to support, it seems like anything that's gonna happen. I mean, is that something you kind of feel when it comes to th th that character bond between the two? Yeah, and that's the best thing about friendship. Like, at some point, you need someone to tell you when you're wrong, to get in your face and kind of like, hey, this isn't, you're not right right here. But at the same time, allowing Shay to be himself. He doesn't try to change Shay. He doesn't tell him, you know, you need to do this. You should do it this way or, you know, you're not doing this right. He lets Shay be himself and work out his problems. So he's like a soundboard for Shay. And he's uh, he's a good moral compass for Shay. He's uh, he's cool and he's calm and collected. I think he has to be. Being a black man in the 1800s, he has to see more than he says. And he gauges everything. He's one step ahead of everyone. And when he speaks, it's significant. But he uses his eyes to his advantage. And I think we see that come across in the, uh, you know, on screen. Now, I have to ask, you know, when you began this, you knew who Sam Elliott was. You've seen some acting, you've seen things too. But to be in the presence of some of those things, because there's some very emotional scenes that he throws out. I mean, he breaks down many times throughout the episodes. You know, is there a different respect now you have for Sam after working with him uh, and, and seeing his process and his his growth as well, I guess? Yeah, the thing that jumped out to me about Sam is his passion for filmmaking, just the craft of acting and filmmaking. Like, you know, on other shows, uh, most actors would, when they're not filming, they would go to their trailers or break out, or if they rap, they would go home right away. But Sam, when they're setting up cameras for different shots, whether he's done for the day or whether he's in the next scene in two hours, he had his little Apple box. He has his, you know, his chair, cash chair with his name on it. He never used it, never used that chair. He had an Apple box. And while they're setting up, it can be freezing outside or it can be hot in Fort Worth, 100 and something degrees. He would bring his Apple box right in the middle of where they're setting up the shot and listen to what the director is saying. You know, this is what we want to capture here and this and that. He's talking to the camera guys. He's talking to the grips. Like he just loved being around the crew and the cast, but just that's a passion that he has for filmmaking and it's infectious and, and it bled into all of us. Like there was a scene where, where Sam had finished up around noon for the day and me and Graziella had, um, Noemi had the scene where I gave her the mirror camp, you know, by the campfire 
it was like one in the morning. Sam went home, went back to the ranch and came back at like 1230 at night, knowing he had first call in the morning, but he just wanted to see the scene in person because he, you know, for support of us, you know, in one way, but also just that he was looking forward to seeing that scene. So he's a fan of the craft, not just, you know, the Hollywood icon, but he's, he, it's, I hope I, I could, you know, take some of that with me. I have no doubt you will. I will have one minute left, but I have to ask, of course, we come to finale. It's a Taylor Sheridan show. And of course, he doesn't leave anything just by the side while you're picking flowers. So what can fans expect, expect? And more importantly, um, is it going to, is it going to make them like, is, are they going to take it with them? Like, are they going to take it with them just thinking about it for the next couple of weeks? Just going, oh my God, I, what is happening? I mean, what, what would you like equal it to? Are we, are we looking for a tidal wave or are we in for just a, a quick shot to the face that's just going to leave us stinging? No, it's going to be a tsunami. And I think like every other uh, thing, every other episode, like you, you turn the TV off and you just sit there and take in what you just witnessed. And Taylor, the, you know, from the script to the beauty of the landscape, to the scenery, to the, the depth of these stories. And people are so involved in these characters because it was such a slow burn from the beginning. You feel like you're a fly on the, on the wagon train watching all this happen in real time. You know, so I just, I think people are so, you know, involved in these characters that it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave an effect on you. I have no doubt. Well, I thank you very much for all your hard work. I hope uh, I hope you can uh, get a chance to lead a set the way Sam does in the near future as well. More importantly, we look forward to many more episodes and hopefully you'll come back to Las Vegas to share some more before the next season as well. Until then, the finale is going to be amazing and I hope everyone in your world is happy and healthy. I would love that. Thank you for having me and the same to you, brother. Be good.